Blend Boards presents KiCad Creating a DB15 PCB Footprint. For this video, we're going to use a spreadsheet program, in this case, LibreOffice Calculator, and the data sheet from the manufacturer. Note that the dimensions that are on the drawing itself are all in millimeters, and the table below shows dimensions in both inches and millimeters, with inches being on the top. This table shows DB9, DB15, DB25 and DB37 connectors. We'll be doing the DB9 connector for this video. The drawing shows dimensioned pins at locations and the variable dimensions are shown with the A, A1, B, C across the top. The A dimension is the edge, the edge of the shell of the connector itself differs by whether it's male or female. Uh, for the spreadsheet table, first thing we'll do is fill out the pin numbers. And the goal is to find the X and Y positions of each of those pins. So the pins that are in one row are 1 through 8, and the next row are 9 through 15. And for the sake of the video, we'll just start with pin 1 at 0, 0. Things can always be moved later on. So we can have to spread, drag that 1, 2, 3, 4 down in the spreadsheet till we get to the final position in the first row. The data sheet's a little tricky for this part. If you notice the spacing, the 1.385 millimeters is between the pins in the alternate row. So pins one and two would actually be twice that far apart. So for that we go down to pin nine and start with pin one as our reference point and then subtract off the 1.35 because we're moving in a negative direction. You can use that same formula down the page to get all the other pins. Note that pin 2 is also 1.385 off of where pin 9 was. Once we have a pattern, we can drag and drop that pattern here in KiCad and get the numbers automatically calculated for us here in the spreadsheet. Let's do a couple more numbers and then we'll just drag it down and see what we get. Let's see. Well, that didn't fill out right because the bottom isn't in there. Everything's top and bottom relative. Okay, that looks pretty good. Each pin is about two, two and change apart. That's why this part is a little more complicated because it's not a standard tenth inch spacing and it's not a millimeter kind of a spacing either. Now in the Y, the first row is all in the same position, but the next row is off by uh, some distance here. So. Notice that the picture in the middle there was a bottom view, not a top view of the card, so it's down to get to pin 9, even though it looks up in that picture from the bottom view, it would be in the other direction. So for that, we'll take the 10.92 uh, and the 8.08 uh, and find the average between the two, and that'll be our y dimension to get to that or actually to the distance between those two points. A little bit more than a tenth of an inch again. I think it's one. 0.109 in uh, regular decimal number system. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is find those mounting holes and for that we can find the width of the part being pin 8 versus pin 1, the maximum distance there. And we're going to use the whole calculation there uh, just because if we move pin 1 to somewhere else it'll still work. The thing to note here is that the mounting holes are dimensioned on the drawing uh, let's see what they are. That's dimension, uh, that's dimension B on the drawing, and dimension B is 33.32. So um, we have to add those two to get the, dis the difference between the two numbers. And when we do that, that'll give us the amount of room between the edge of the pins and the mounting hole itself. So the next step would clearly be to get half of that to get the distance between each one of the mounting pins and uh, the holes on the side there. But now we're just going to subtract those two numbers from each other. You get 13.93 millimeters and half of that again from one pin to the center of that on each side would be half that number. In this case it's a little bit under seven millimeters off the side and those numbers look reasonable. In the end we'll do a test because this is a known part. We'll do it against a uh, library component. Next holes we want to find are those mounting holes where they are exactly. So they're going to be relative to pins 1 and pin 8, and the distance is going to be that 6.965. Uh, 
So one case we have to add because it's positive compared to point, uh, pin one. And the other one we have to subtract to get the full distance. And if we looked at the difference between 26.355 and 9.65, counting in the uh, sign difference, we get our 33.32 number, of course. So that gives us all the x values for the b1 and b2, but the y looks like it's just flat out half between the two dimensions. So again, we'll do the full calculation for that, or we can just take that 2.84 uh, number and divide it by 2. In this case, we'll subtract it off the pin 1 versus pin 15 row uh, y difference, and then divide that by 2. Uh, could have done the math a little bit simpler in this case, but if, again, if we want to offset this part later, it'll be helpful to have that. And the B2, of course, is in line with uh, mounting hole number 1, so that that number can just be copied. Formula can't be copied, but the number itself can be copied. Uh, we'll try a couple of times here, but eventually we'll figure it out. It has to be the same number. So that gives us all the dimensions we need to put the part in the footprint editor. Before we jump, jump over to the board uh, footprint layout, let's do that hole and pad size. Now the drawing shows that the pad pin width, excuse me, the pin width is 0 0.60 inches. It's not square or otherwise. We multiply it times 1.4 or 1.5. It's a thinner pin than that, but it's not dimensioned here. So let's just use a general rule of thumb of 0.6 from the data sheet times 1.25. Uh, maybe that'll be a little small, maybe it'll be a little big. We'll take a look later and check it out. The pad size has to take into account the annular ring around the pin itself. Uh, and a typical rule for an annular ring would be 01, let's see, 014 mils, not millimeters, but mils. Uh, just notice you copied all, or we notice copy down all of the hole sizes because they're all the same for all of those holes 1 through 15. But 1 inch is 25.4 uh, millimeters, so if we wanted 14 millimeter annular or 14 mils excuse me annular ring which is a number we're kind of used to we would have to multiply that 0.014 inches times 25.4 to get in a uh, calculation of how many millimeters that is so that number is about 0.3556 and the annular ring gets added to both sides of that so basically we want to take the whole size and add twice that 0.3556 to arrive at how wide the pad itself needs to be. And that number is 1.46 millimeter wide pad. To do the same thing for the mounting holes is a little more complicated. Unless I'm missing something here, there's no dimension shown for these stakes on the card. Uh, a little bit frustrating. I've seen this many times before. Um, probably have to go to another manufacturer's data sheet to try to figure it out and then hope that this part that I purchased here matches some other manufacturer. These are somewhat standard, but I've seen some variation between library components and what it actually is. All right, hopping over to the PCB new and uh, creating a footprint here. Start with a new footprint, we'll call it uh, DB15. Gee, what, a, what an odd name for it. Uh, first thing to do really is to make sure that we're in the right grid and right units. Right now we're in millimeters, like the data sheet is. And our grid is a little bit off from the pin size, it's about half that, but we'll leave it at one millimeter just because it's more convenient. We're gonna throw down pin one at zero, zero, and then go in and edit that pin to make sure that the size of the pin is right, and it's, it's close enough. Um, default pin size is very close, and so we're gonna call that a check mark. And the default pad size is also fairly close, so we'll just uh, check those both off and start from there. Since we've set that as the pad size, subsequent pads will all be in that same size, and the location is already zero, zero for the first part, so we're in good shape. That's probably the easiest pin because there's less typing for that one once you get the pin sizes right. Let's throw it on pin two, uh, just space it over a little bit, roughly where it would be, maybe it'd be a little bit different, but let's look at where it is. 
So instead of being minus 2, it should be minus 2.77 according to our spreadsheet. And the Y stays the same at 0. So let's uh, keep up the same pattern here. Uh, we'll have to throw down the next pin. Got to go back and grab the pins. Uh, later we'll just throw, it up, throw down the pins in sequence and then go back and edit the distances. But for now we'll just keep doing it the hard way. So the 5 is, or uh, 6 is uh, the next number down there on the list. And uh, let's see how it keeps going here. That was the third pin. Fourth pin is at uh, 8.31 it looks like, minus. Throw that pin down and go in and fix the location of each of these pins as we're going along. It really doesn't take that long if you've got a spreadsheet off to the right. If you're trying to sit there with a calculator and doing this math as you go across it could get a little bit unwieldy just because of the sheer number of pins. Throw down pin number five, 11.08. It's probably pretty close to begin with but it's worth setting them right on so you don't have trouble getting your parts into your card when you go to build it. And really all that we're affecting here is the X dimension because the Y is already correct. Uh, looks like the next one's 13.86 maybe. A little hard to tell on the screen here. And uh, that, or 85 maybe. And that's almost the first row. we got to go across to pin 8 to get the first row completed. And then we'll step down to the second row. And when you get down there, um, we'll have the X and Y dimensions all ready for us. And we'll just throw down some more pins just to make this go quicker. Let's see, the next pin is pin 8. And well, we threw that pretty far left, but when we get in there, we can adjust that down to what pin 8 is, 19.39 it looks like. Remember, the signs are negative is left and uh, negative uh, for x uh, is left and kind of like a normal system it would be more minus but the y dimension is positive going down and as you can see that's the case here it's not like the normal quad one we're used to from things we've learned in school now if we set that to 1385 negative and 2.84 it looks pretty close it looks like it's centered between the two pins and it's a couple of tenths below it so uh, hopefully pretty soon here we'll just let these pins start to throw down and then manually edit them all one at a time. We can see the pins take shape and where they're placed. They just look right visually. If you type the number that was too far off, it wouldn't look right. It would be placed in a wrong position. Uh, we roughly placed them as we were going across to have it fairly easy to deal with when we got to this point. Now, unfortunately, the Y is always going to be a matter of typing in those numbers. Um, there's probably a better way to do this. I think there's some automated tools inside of here to do that don't quite know how to use those maybe and maybe somebody can come up with a better suggestion for doing this but this is how we've done them. Uh, we're almost at the end of the part actually. We're up to pin 15 and they're all placed. They should match the spreadsheet uh, and something we can generally trust if we've put it in there ourselves. If we printed it out on paper we could even check the dimensions if we wanted to. All right let's go ahead and save that footprint in a library that we already have that exists and give it a unique name. We're back in the board editing program and we've just loaded the part in. This part happens to be a standard part so let's go look for the DB15 that already exists in the library and see how well what we did compares. It should lay on top of it pretty cleanly which would be good evidence that we did it correctly or it could be evidence that the original part wasn't quite right well let's see what happens here go ahead and drop that part in there and let's go ahead and move it on top of it just to see what it looks like 
Looks pretty right, except I'd say the far left pin on their symbol may be a little bit off. In fact, all of theirs may be drifted a little bit off. They might not have the right scale or dimension, or that could have been for a different part. Hopefully this video will help you create your own footprints. For more information, check out our wiki page. We also have a YouTube channel where you can learn how to use these products, and we sell our products on Tindy. Thanks for watching our video.